Three. General Hospital. Edward was having a heart attack and Tracy wouldn't give him his medication. Give him pills. It was like, drop dead, Dad. Big freeze. Man. I cannot stop the weather machine. I'm Reba McIntyre. Join me as I take you through the greatest moments in soap history. It's a General Hospital daytime to remember on ABC. I'm Reba McIntyre, and it's time for another daytime to remember. For the next four weeks, we'll look back at General Hospital. Today, we'll see Tracy Quartermain at her devilish best. If you think Tracy had done some pretty nasty deeds recently, then watch what happens in today's episode from 17 years ago. As the daughter of Edward and Lila Quartermain, Tracy was born rich, but it was never enough. She wanted, she needed her daddy's approval, but in Edward's eyes, Tracy could never seem to measure up to her brother, Alan. So in trying to win her daddy's favor, she set out to prove that Alan's newborn son, AJ, wasn't really his. Well, everybody knew Monica was having an affair with Rick Weber. So Tracy had the gall to go to court and file a paternity suit. Get it? If Tracy could prove that AJ wasn't Alan's baby, then her little Ned would inherit every penny of the family fortune. Well, Tracy's lawsuit made her father furious. How dare she air the family's dirty laundry in public? So Edward decided to get even with his daughter. He drew up a brand new will and cut Tracy out. In this episode from 1980, picked as a favorite by TV Guide, we're going to see Tracy at her downright dirty dealing best. Or worst. See for yourself. What are you still doing here? You walked out, Tracy. I didn't. You interested in that game? No, I'm not. I'm through with games. It's a very wise move. All right, Daddy, I have a move for you. I'd like you to leave. Not yet. I uh, haven't accomplished what I came here for. Ah, uh, yes. You haven't signed the will. I told you I wanted to do that in your presence, and I can now. But before I do that, uh, Tracy, I want you to know exactly why I'm doing this to you. It's because you've allowed money to become a, a god in your life. You'd do anything to get your hands on that trust fund. I know that now. Ruin the family, destroy your brother, disgrace the family name. And most important of all, go against my direct orders, which only goes to prove that you no longer love me, if indeed you ever did. It's not true, Daddy, and you know it. When I sign this will, Tracy, I want you to know that uh, I despise the very sight of you. Daddy, don't hurt me this way, please. I'm no longer your father, Tracy. Daddy, don't you understand? You're the only one that ever really mattered. Prove it. By dropping the paternity Don't test. ask me, Daddy. I can't. I can't because I have gone too far. I guess you have, Tracy. You've gone so far that you're no longer the daughter that I thought I once knew and loved. No. You still love me. You have to. I feel nothing for you, Tracy. Nothing at all. Daddy, if you feel nothing for me, and you don't love me anymore. I feel nothing but a deep sense of rage which is beginning to destroy me. You're going to regret this day, Tracy. You're going to know what I mean when I say I am cutting you out of the family, that you are no longer a quarter me. It means I never want to look on your face again. I don't want your family gatherings. I don't want you around me for holidays. And most of all, I don't want to even have to pretend that I still have a daughter. Honey, <coughs> oh. what's the matter? What is it? My medication, Trace. Give me my medication. Oh. Daddy, you're having a heart attack. It's in the apartment. It's a... Drawer. 
so drunk. My pupil. Mary. Daddy, I, I, I don't have a key to your apartment. You know, I always said I should I should have a key, but I don't. It's here. Right here. I, I can't reach it. I'm Tracy. Okay, Daddy. Okay. It's here. In here. Yes. I can't. Hurry. Hurry. Here it is, Daddy. I got it. Tracy. You know, Daddy, it was really very careless of you to leave your apartment without taking your medication with you. Tracy, I need my medication now. That would help, wouldn't it? Tracy. Then you could live long enough to sign the will. Her daddy. Cutting me off from the entire quarter man's fortune. Well, now, gee. That's something I'm going to have to think about, isn't it? That baby was born to Monica? Please, Tracy. You're begging me, Daddy. After you tried so hard to make me look like a liar and a fool. We'll discuss it later, Tracy. No, Daddy, there's nothing to discuss. Because I want you to know right now, no matter what happens, I'm not dropping that fraternity dance. And I am doing it for all of us, every last quarter man. For Mother, for Alan. But most of all, I am doing it for my own son, Ned. For my flesh and blood. Tracy. Tracy, I... I, I can't breathe. If you ever love me, for God's sake, help me. I don't have to prove I love you, Dad. They know perfectly well. All quarter names love each other automatically. There's only one thing we love more. Isn't that right, Daddy? <laughs> what is it, Dad? Say it. What is it? It's money, Daddy. Oh, God. And I learned that at your knee. You always said to me, Tracy, never count on people. Only count on money. Tracy. My medication, please. Please. Your mom's... Everything all right? Yes, yes very great. nice. <laughs> well, wasn't it safe? Everything I said it was. Oh, you're right, Gil. This place was terrific. And you know, they're going to have some entertainment. I think it starts about 9.30. Well, we'll have to come back again when you don't have to work, Laura. Hmm, that'd be nice. Yeah, well, now that I'm making more money, we're going to start doing more things. Well, we're still going to have to be careful, Scotty. I think you're very lucky to have a husband who wants to indulge you. You know, one day you and I are going to have to go out to the mall and we'll have lunch. <laughs> uh, translation of that is shopping. We'll get your mother to go with us one day. Oh, wow. Life really is going to change, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, don't sound so enthusiastic, Scotty. You're about to be inducted into the mysteries of marriage. Shopping trips. Oh, please, I just cut it out. I can do that with you. Uh, Monica, Rick. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you all enjoy the place? It looks well, nice. I'll huh? try the cheesecakes best in town. Well, listen, um, uh, can't the two of you stay and have coffee with us, maybe? Oh, well, thank you, but uh, we really we have to get back to the hospital. Yes, I've got to get to work myself. Are you working tonight, sweetheart? Yes, and I'm running a little bit late. Why don't we get together again? I'll try to stop by the disco surprise. Oh, that'd be nice. Monica, why don't you and I get together one day soon? Yes, yes, uh, soon. Well, and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.
You know, they were just having dinner. Don't tell me that you approve. Scotty, it isn't my place to approve or disapprove. That isn't for any of us to do. What about your mother? My mother just filed for a divorce. That's only because Rick left her no choice. Oh, Scotty, she filed of her own free will. Oh, now, Lee, come on, don't you start defending Rick. Why not? Somebody has to. Yes, and they're still our friends, Scotty. And he's still my father. Now, look, Rick and Monica are surgeons, and if they want to have dinner at night before they go back to CCU, that's their business. And I, for one, am not going to make my father feel guilty every time I run into him, whether he's with Monica or not. Even though Monica caused a divorce? My father would not have turned to Monica for that one night if everything was working all right in their marriage. Lori. Maybe he did make a mistake, but... Maybe. There are two sides to every story, Scotty. And I'm just not going to make my father pay for one night in his life. And if you're the man I know you are, you won't either. And if you ever decide to go into the law, let me know. You've got a job. Listen, Laura, I'm sorry. It's just that I feel as though Rick's future, I mean, he's blown. I mean, his whole career has gone up in smoke. Scotty, nobody knows what the future holds. You can plan and plan, and it's never totally in your control. I think Laura's right. And that's why we should enjoy each day to the fullest. That's right, Scotty, and let everyone else enjoy their days. Don't waste your time worrying about other people. It's a waste of time. We will all be a long time dead. Daddy, if I get your medication, will you tear up the new will? How can you talk about the money? How can you talk about anything but my life? I'm sorry, Daddy. Medication, please. Okay, Daddy, okay, all right, I'll get it. Hurry. Oh, Trisha, please hurry. <laughs> because Scotty and Laura Baldwin had only been married a few short months, and as you can see from that last scene, that there's already trouble in paradise. And that trouble can be summed up in one four letter word, L U K E, as in Laura's boss at the campus disco, Luke Spencer. But let's back up a little bit. Scotty and Laura's marriage had begun to fall apart almost before it began. Scotty was a struggling law student who spent his days and nights hitting the books. Laura was bored, so she took a job waiting tables at Luke's Disco. Over time, Luke and Laura's relationship became more and more complex. And the fact that Luke was engaged to mob princess Jennifer Smith only made Laura more confused, more angry, and more jealous. And as we are about to learn, all the more exasperating for her husband, Scotty. Hey, Scotty, don't let it get you down. I really blew the whole evening. No, 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 no you didn't. Oh, yeah, well, tell that to Laura. I mean, I should have known better than to get into it. It's just that I, I cannot figure her out sometimes. Listen, you're not the first husband with that problem. Yeah, well, I'm worried about her. I'm really worried. Well, of course you were. You love her. You, you need to talk to her about it. So, so you did notice, I mean, that she was acting a little strange, didn't you? Yes, I thought she did seem a little edgy, even though she was trying to cover it. But maybe it's just because she's so afraid of all the changes that are going on in her life right now. I think so. Yes, I think it's very possible. I mean, even earlier you said there was going to be a change in your lifestyle, too, and... Well, you know, some people, it's very hard for them to accept change, Scotty. Well, maybe I should forget about the idea of moving into a bigger place. Very difficult question to answer. I mean, would Laura feel more secure staying where she is, or, or would she getting away from all those memories in our place? I mean, I just don't know at this point. I, I don't know. Well, Scotty, they weren't all bad memories in that apartment. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, she did have a good time fixing the place up. But, you know, um, seeing the house that Frank Smith gave to Luke and Jennifer. Look, son, you're not going to be able to keep up with Luke now that he's married into the Smith family. I hope you're not going to try that. Oh, no, I mean, I don't feel in competition with Luke, Well, no. good. I'm glad you don't, because you'd just be miserable if you didn't. Look, about the house, why don't you let Laura give you the lead? I mean, she'll tell you when she wants one, and then you'll know when the time is right. Yeah, well... I mean, it's going to be a couple of years before I can afford anything. 
Uh, you just be patient. You know, I think that Leslie filing divorce is much harder on Laura than she even will admit to, even to herself. You're probably right. Huh? That's probably why she, she didn't want me to take her to work. I mean, that's why she took the cab. She seemed very anxious to see her mother. Yeah, well, I just wonder how she's going to handle that. I mean, just seeing Rick and Monica together, now she's got to go see her mother, trying to be single. Did you see the champion? Laura, are you jealous? No, I'm not. Well, what is the matter with you? I want you to leave my mother alone. Laura, she came in here for a pizza and a good time. Hopefully, she came in with Diana Taylor. I saw Diana. Well, then you know that Diana is dancing. Your mother was sitting alone at the table. I thought maybe she would want to dance, and she did. Now, come on, blow up. What's the matter with you? Are you so upset about us that you can't stand to see me with anybody? No, no, I'm... I'm worried about my mother. Well, your mother is not going to drop dead because I danced with her. And neither are you. Sorry. I don't know what's gotten into me tonight. It's been a bad night all the way around. Well, try not to spoil the evening for your mother. It's bad for business. I'll get changed. You're on station four. Thank you. Hey, Mom. Hey. Oh, hi. What do you think of the disco? Well, I think it's just wonderful. What do you think of me being here? <laughs> you know, I called over to the house to see if you'd like to come to dinner with us because Grant told me that you were here. Oh, yeah, well, Dolly's getting a little worried about Diana because she really has been under a lot of strain and working terrifically hard lately with Jeremy, and I thought it was just time that she got out and boogied. <laughs> it's so funny to hear you say that. Oh, I thought it sounded natural. Well, you know, it, it's really great to see you having such a good time. Thank you, hon. And it, and it was a great lesson for me to learn. There really is a whole wonderful world out here. You just got to get out there and look for it. And, and I intend to do that from now on. You deserve the best, Mom. And thank you for thanking us for dinner tonight. Well, Daddy and I went to dinner with Lily and Dale, and we thought that you might like to join us. Oh, how lovely. Did you go to the rib? No, no. We went to this little French restaurant over on Bryant. Oh, that's such a nice restaurant. We should go there. Yeah. Oh, Marcy. Hi. This man is going to wear me out. What's the matter with you? Oh, honey, it's late. Oh. Well, Laura, if you're joining us, would you care to get out and boogie a little bit? <laughs> well, uh, thank you, but I'm just on my way to change for work. Oh, oh. Hey, Leslie. Huh? Come on, go. Oh. Sure, why not? After all, dancing is my life. Good girl. <laughs> well, what? Daddy, I got some... I got some inside to get them But you know, they weren't always kept in work. They weren't in the store at all. They were in the medicine cabinet. I had to look for them. Yes, let me have them. Daddy, Daddy. Daddy, will you, will you tear up this will? If I can't reach her, you will tear up the will. I won't. Daddy, come on, here it is. It's right here. Just tear it up. Yeah. I won't. Daddy, I'll do it. No. Oh, God's sake, help me, Tracy. Promise me you're not going to sign that will. That's all. Just one little promise. Please. Oh, Daddy. 
such a beautiful night. It's such a beautiful night. That Tracy is as callous as they come, leaving her daddy to die like that. Just wait till tomorrow. We'll see the conclusion of Tracy's treachery, as well as treat ourselves to some more boogieing, bus stopping, and bumping at the campus disco. Who knows? Maybe Dr. Leslie Weber will do the hustle. Now that's bound to be a daytime to remember. Well, time to put on my platform shoes and shake my booty out of here. See you tomorrow. Tonight, Bobby Simone is caught up in something so dangerous that his entire world is about to change forever. At all new NYPD Blue tonight, your discretion advised. Will Haley heed Mateo's warning to stay away from Tanner? Watch what happens on All My Children today. General Hospital. Edward was having a heart attack and Tracy wouldn't give him his medication. Give him pills. It was like, drop dead, Dad. Big freeze. I cannot stop the weather machine. I'm Reba McIntyre. Join me as I take you through the greatest moments in soap history. It's a general hospital daytime to remember on ABC. She needed her daddy's approval. But in Edward's eyes, Tracy could never seem to measure up to her brother Alan. So in trying to win her daddy's favor, she set out to prove that Alan's newborn son, AJ, wasn't really his. Well, everybody knew Monica was having an affair with Rick Weber. So Tracy had the gall to go to court and file a paternity suit. Get it? If Tracy could prove that AJ wasn't Alan's baby, then her little Ned would inherit every penny of the... I'm Reba McIntyre, and it's time for another daytime to remember. For the next four weeks, we'll look back at General Hospital. Today, we'll see Tracy Quartermain at her devilish best. If you think Tracy had done some pretty nasty deeds recently, then watch what happens in today's episode from 17 years ago. As the daughter of Edward and Lila Quartermain, Tracy was born rich, but it was never enough for family fortune. Well, Tracy's lawsuit made her father furious. How dare she air the family's dirty laundry in public? So Edward decided to get even with his daughter. He drew up a brand new will and cut Tracy out. In this episode from 1980, picked as a favorite by TV Guide, we're going to see Tracy at her downright dirty dealing best. Or worst. See for yourself. What are you still doing here? You walked out, Tracy. I didn't. You interested in that game? No, I'm not. I'm through with games. It's a very wise move. All right, Daddy, I have a move for you. I'd like you to leave. Not yet. I uh, haven't accomplished what I came here for. Ah, uh, yes. 